Hello everyone, Ice Cool Tech here. Now today we are going to be taking a look at, to see how the iPhone SE first generation has held up on the latest developer beta of iOS 14, developer beta 5. Now, as always, before we get into the video, if you guys do happen to be new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications enabled to stay up to date with more content just like this. Now, every subscriber truly does mean a lot. Anyways, let's get straight into the video iOS 14 Developer Beta 5 released earlier this week, surprising many with its very large file size. Now, this update came in at 1.09 GB for my iPhone SE, which is much bigger than that of Beta 2, Beta 3, or even Beta 4. Now, iOS 14 Beta 5 brings many tweaks and bug fixes, as well as the new surround sound feature for AirPods Pro users. Now, sadly, we did not see the new wallpaper UI that was leaked a while ago, and was said to come in beta 5 by credible leaker iHack2. But I haven't lost hope yet. Apple has in fact touched the wallpaper menu by adjusting the size of the wallpaper options in each category, and they've done something to cause a bug with iPadOS 14 beta 5 where the stills category would be missing entirely. Now this bug does not affect every iPadOS user, but some are reporting it. Now the small change to the wallpaper UI may be very small, but it wasn't necessary either. Now, performance while running iOS 14 Developer Beta 5 on the iPhone SE has been excellent. Just like Beta 4, apps launch quickly and web pages load up pretty fast. Now, I've had no issues in terms of general performance. RAM management has been pretty good as well. I haven't been experiencing many reloads, and I am able to keep apps open for a fairly decent amount of time. This is very good news, especially considering that the iPhone SE only has 2GB of RAM. Now, animations have been phenomenal. I've noticed that animations such as swiping to access the notification and control centers, opening and closing apps, closing apps with the multitasking screen, etc. have all been incredibly smooth. However, I have heard that some users are reporting stuttering within the app library. I have not experienced this personally, but I thought it was worth noting. Now before I get into battery, I should take a second to mention that my iPhone SE is holding a maximum battery capacity of 91% and has had a restart. However, I've manually disabled performance throttling in settings as you can see right here. This means that my iPhone SE is not being performance throttled to maintain battery life or prevent restarts. Now, battery life on the iPhone SE while running iOS 14 developer beta 5 has actually been great for the most part. There is still slight battery drain, but nothing too out of the ordinary considering that this is a major beta. Now, standby time has been okay. I've noticed a drain of about 8% overnight. Now this is certainly not the worst I've ever seen, but it's definitely not the best. Again, this is expected and we should see more improvement as we get closer to a final release. Now there is still overheating in beta 5, but it's not too bad. And in my experience, the iPhone does not get too hot too often. Now, of course, for the main question, should you update? Well, my answer is simple. If you're on an earlier version of iOS and you're not comfortable installing beta firmware, then I'd say don't update. If you're on an earlier version of iOS and you are okay with installing beta firmware or you're on an earlier beta of iOS 14, I'd say there's no reason not to. Overall, iOS 14 Developer Beta 5 has been a very stable release, with the worst issues being a slight battery drain, minimal overheating, an occasional app library stutter, which only affects some users apparently, and a system services freeze. Now, as always, if you do have any questions or you just want to say hi, definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. Alright everyone, that is all I have for this video. If you did enjoy the video or find it helpful in any way, show me by leaving a like. And if you are new to the channel, of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber truly does mean a lot and it's very appreciated. Now don't forget to follow me on Twitter and check out my iSchool Tech official Discord. Links are both in the description down below. Now, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.